Hello everybody, welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City. Wow, this was going to be one of the podcasts I did and I didn't put it out before Halloween, but it was in the month of October and this will probably be published the you know, weekend after. So this is a beloved game of mine. There's um, not much to say. People got to know what Resident Evil is. If it's not a video game uh, franchise that you know, it's a movie franchise that went, I think, seven movies with Mila Jovovich, who I love. And by the way, I do love a couple of those movies, but they're basically popcorn, silly, fun movies. Some are a little better than others. But in the end, I say the Resident Evil movie franchise was a success in general audiences maybe and a cult following because she's just great as an action star probably one of the best of our time in this female category if you want to put it in that and like i said i'm a real fan of the game and i didn't know much about this movie at all in my search for things to watch for my you know spooky october um viewing which i have a list of basically and it's the halloween movies and Friday 13s and, you know, all the good stuff, Exorcist, and this got on my radar. I got to watch this movie. The only thing I really heard about this movie was that it was geared towards people who want more familiarity with the game. So it's going to be more like the game than the movies were with Mila Jovovich because they just went crazy and didn't give a fuck. They took Alice, uh, Mila's character, and made it a center point, and all the... Characters that we really loved and knew from the games were put into the movies here and there. Some of the villains and stuff. And it's, it's some of it is iconic and I love it. But it's not a true, you know, uh, re you know, rendition of the game put to the movies and it didn't feel that way. But I enjoyed them for what they were. So I got to admit, the first couple of minutes of this movie kind of had me and I was really sort of into it you know i, I want to love these movies i don't want to shit on movies all the time and you know as the movie progresses I, I i you know i just start losing aspects of my interest and i'm not even a big social media guy but my brain kept going to other things and if it's not check this or check that what's my emails it shouldn't happen in a movie like this but it does and i'm wondering if in the whole picture, do we have a weak script with decent actors? And is it a mix of both? Is it not the right actors? I think it's the whole bag of everything. I mean, you've got some really good actors that I really like. Uh, one of the guys that plays Wesker is from uh, the Umbrella Academy, and he's great. But how do you miscast Leon? When you have a guy on the team who looks exactly like fucking Leon from the game. And I know we might not be going for, you know, it has to look right, but I want the best actor. That's fine. This isn't Daniel Day-Lewis. This isn't fucking even action top star Tom Cruise. Like, this is, you know, um, B-actor type people who rise to the occasion occasionally. There are some good moments in here, some great cinematography ideas are there the premise was sound i guess it's the implementation and the decisions you make to go through this movie and as i'm progressing through the movie uh you know my passion and interest just dwindled and it didn't really pick up again not even through what you would call the acts of the movie the sort of first act the second act the third act so this is a little bit of a mixed bag for me i want to love it so much it's Resident Evil done more like the game, you know, which is a legitimate complaint when game lovers went to see those movies with Mila Jovovich and didn't enjoy the connection to the game. It didn't resonate. And you want to make something a, a, a much more, you know, correct adaption for, you know, nerds galore and horror or whatever. And I'm a fan of the original. So I'm born in 71. I remember the PlayStation getting it and having the real footage on it having six friends around, all watching the game, watching me play, and it was one of those games where you didn't mind giving the controller over to someone else because you were just fascinated and you watched the game. It was very rare. And I get what they tried to do with this game. There were legitimate 
exact copies of certain shots, or at least close to, from the game. And they highlight it and stick on it. And it, it does resonate. And like I said, you've got some halfway decent actors that I enjoyed and like, but this is bullshit. Uh, connective tissue it just doesn't work that well. And, you know, it's directed by Jonathan Roberts, or, oh, sorry, Johannes Roberts. And it's produced by James Harris, Robert Coulter, Hartley, Gorsing, and, you know, I, I go through the fucking stars. So it's Caius, Go Delario, Hannah John Kamen, Robbie Amell. I know him. He played Firestorm on the Arrow universe. And I think he's the brother of the actor. Tom Hopper, Evan Yog Jogia, Donald Lug, Neil McDonald. See, it's. It's not even the fact that you have to have stars in it. If this movie was great, I'd highlight, you know, who, you know, Tom Hopper's performances and what he did. This doesn't work. It doesn't elevate the material. And and you can't do so many shots and get everything like the video game and not sort of annoy people. So there's a part in this movie where they decide to do a pretty cool thing where there's no lights in the room, right? So we know what's going to happen. Muzzle fire makes the flashes. And that's how you see what's going on. But they do it for so fucking long, you get annoyed. And then when he pulls out the lighter, and he flicks the lighter, you're, caught, you're supposed to be captivated back into the game, and the lighter, and, and it works. But it doesn't work as a whole, because you did too much muzzle flash bullshit, and then you use the lighter theme too much. There should have been hard cuts and quick decisions, and wham, bam, thank you, man. No, it, it stretched out too long, and, you know... You don't have a helicopter crash into a police station next to people. They wake up and they're two feet away. When you showed an explosion, ripped through the fucking thing because you wanted to show cool CGI effects that you, you, you're you nailing down. And you know what? Talk about trying to do shots right and getting the video game angles right and all that stuff with the camera. You know, I'll give them props for that. But, you know, Suspension of disbelief goes so far, even on a zombie video game or uh, whatever the fuck, uh, weaponized human video game. And the movie translation, it needs to be a little bit more subtle in the beginning and then ramp up. Like, maybe I'm making the decisions here, whatever, but I, you can't use good CGI practical stuff and mix in bad stuff, and then the bad stuff really stands out. I think the way people use special effects these days well is using practical and using the special effects to enhance it and i think that's what they tried here but it fails in certain aspects you don't have a huge fiery explosion from a helicopter crash into a police station and the people are five feet away and by the way they amped this up because at the end of the fucking movie spoilers the major villain because it's really a little it's all over the place this fucking movie in that case what is the very major villain is killed by a rocket launcher. Now, the rocket launcher is fired from about 18 feet away in a train car. A fucking train car. Two feet away from the villain is Chris Redfield. What, eight feet away is a fucking Jill Valentine and maybe a little girl? And you want me to even entertain the thought that a rocket launcher is fired that kills this creature and leaves everybody fine. I don't care how many quirky lines you put in. It was fucking stupid. And speaking of the main villain, sort of, you don't know what's going on. They got this fucking actor and you love him and everything. You love to hate him, right? You, um, I wish I would know. I think it's the, um, uh, it's not Tom Hopper. Tom Hopper is the guy from uh, Umbrella Academy, right? So it's Neil McDonough. This guy, he's got a look, right? Everything he's in, he fucking draws your attention. Back to when I first saw him in, like, the first Star Trek uh, first contact as a fucking B fucking Starfleet guy. And justified. This guy nails everything he does, and you wasted him. You wasted him. And he's so good because you don't know if he's really a nice fatherly lab guy or a sick, twisted, experimental, twist your mustache guy. And he can do it all. And he's wasted in this movie because the moments he shines in this movie really oh, captivate me. 
And yeah, it's a bias maybe because you love him and everything. But this guy, Neil McDonald, they even got this uh, Donald Logue, who's great in a lot of stuff. And what did he last see him in? It was like the Gotham show where he plays the captain. They, they just missed opportunities everywhere. Now, I could see this as a let's do this, let's get this, and let's put out love because it's clearly wants to be like the game and it, maybe people love the game that made this it just didn't hit all the spots it should and it's an obvious tease for more movies so if they want to wrap this movie and call it uh resident evil one and two from the game that's what this movie would be so it's like resident evil one and two the story and all the stuff is encapsulated in welcome to raccoon city and then i could see resident evil you know, Umbrella Academy, like, whatever the fuck, you know, because that's actually, you know, get it? Actors from Umbrella Academy. Anyway, that's what I think this is for, and I think it was trying to be um, true to the games. It just didn't hit all the marks, and I don't know how you have such miscast nonsense when you know that people love the characters. I don't care, like... What like I guess if you want to let's just nail down Leon. So you're making him the rookie, dark black hair, black facial hair, like nothing like Leon. But if you want to just take that all the way and say, okay, no, this is Leon's rookie days and how he mans up and becomes the guy you see in the games. Fine, but gotta do it good, right? This is not done good. Some of the lines are terrible. The fucking some acting things are just bad and it doesn't work and there are times they, they are good in certain scenes so i might chalk this up to a director editor mess up in the sense that they don't nail it but they they try to do their best i talked about this with like morbius and stuff that i enjoyed the movie uh probably more than this in that sense but you had the feeling someone would have loved put the movie together and just did the best they could with what they had. This makes me feel like they didn't have really excellent stuff. And they put this together to make a movie and it doesn't cohesively make you feel satisfied. Now, could that come from making it too much like the game and the love of the game? I don't think so because I don't remember the fucking game. You know how long ago those were? They're up to like Resident Evil 8 or 9, and it's totally different stories, putting different, you know, aspects of the world and regions and taking, you know, splintering the storyline and expanding it and stuff. And it's been all over the place. And so I don't think that's it either. I think these are, you know, moments they tried to capture from the first two games and they wrote around it and decided to make Leon a fucking schmuck. You know, a drunk, lazy, really tired. Maybe he has one of those things where you fall asleep all the time. And, you know, I kind of enjoy the uh, Chris Redfield, uh, you know. I was a little surprised with the Jill. And they do this thing that's a little confusing with the experimental actor, orphanage leader guy. Because what is happening is Umbrella is... From the 80s is using an orphanage and cycling the kids through experiments okay there you go and they use this through line but it's a little confusing because you think they're showing you jill as a child and it's not or it is and the girl looks the same as the new girl they're showing because he has another family and like i said they bring this guy in neil mcdonald throughout the movie and he's not given enough impact because this guy alone could have carried the movie you know, as much as I did like Robbie Amell as Chris Redfield and, you know, this certain aspects, he was the guy who was going to nail this movie and elevate it. And why you didn't give him more, and I guess that's the fault of the video games, right? Because you never really had that villain in the game in, in, until later in the series. And you're showing the beginning of Wesker. You know, I think Tom Hopper is playing Wesker. I, I love this guy, he's actor, and his performance is okay. But there's, you know, there's this disconnect throughout the movie. And I'm sorry, uh, you know, I don't know why this comes to mind. I know it's totally separated, but George Lucas in the Phantom Menace and his prequels. 
he obviously had so much control and no one did anything to stop him and they made these movies and although I liked them in a sense and they're part of my you know um memories of great times going to the movie theaters to watch them with, with lightsabers and watching people and dress up it was like events they don't hold up and although I do even appreciate the politics he put in and stuff this has that feeling like hey I'm going to make this movie more like the game and it was left in someone's hands who was just not up to the task. So I'd love to shit on a lot of these actors and, and, you know, but I don't think that's it. I think they got a pretty good class of actors together to pull this off. I don't like the scenarios and the setups, the, the meat, the chew on the bone. It's just like not there for me. And you made a pretty short movie that could have really nailed a certain aspect like all you really had to do was do a chris well i guess no because you're doing a prequel in a way where this is everybody's origin so wesker's the you know gonna portray and he's gonna at the end of the movie they'll reveal him get ready to be the wesker we know in the game and this is leon's rookie whatever so when you see him in resident evil 4 saving the fucking mayor's daughter or the president's daughter whatever the fuck like maybe that's where they want to go and when they chose this as the, you know, starting ground, did you have too much to chew on? Did you have, you know, you, you put these scenarios where you got like half of them go to this and the other two, you're finding out what's going on and they come together at the end. It's, it's kind of maybe hard to pull off, um, but I just don't feel it. I don't feel that. I don't feel the passion to come on here and even shit on it a lot or praise it. So it's it's a mediocre, you know, it's just a little mediocre. And yes, I guess you could say the, all the elements had a little bit of mediocrity to them. So it makes that whole co cohesive. That is the answer that I'm looking for. But I thought that would be overcome by my love of the franchise. And I could see maybe you know, outsiders coming into this as their first thing going, you know, this is terrible. It's a uh, B-movie at best and whatever. I try to look at it as uh, someone trying to take the first steps in doing a legitimate adaption of the games. You know, so is that a success? Maybe. I don't know if you want to look at the, you know, what is this done? Box office? Was it released streaming? Like, I don't even know about this movie. But, you know, I don't know, 25, $25 million budget made $42 million worldwide. I don't know how that works these days, because let's be honest, with the pandemic and stuff, it's still, you know, I still have to wear a mask when I make deliveries and places I go to, and it's just being safe. So I don't know how comfortable people are going to the movie theater. Like, I'm not into that part of this. So, I don't know. Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City is a mediocre attempt at a fatal adaption but they hit some high notes in that adaption and i'm wondering if real people who love the game are gonna would it does it slide by and you just are smiling through this like i said i've done some podcasts now and you know, if you look at my channel and my last one i did on she hulk I, I just was smiling through the whole fucking thing and i the Mandalorian, um, those half-hour shows, 40-minute shows are frustrating, and there's some stupid shit in there. But it's, it's trying, at least, to do the right thing after the horrible movies they put out recently. And I enjoy it. I'm smiling, and I'm having fun. And I can let these things slide that are silly and make draw me out and like aren't well executed. Um... The Obi-Wan series, some of that is greatness, but you know what? Some of those scenes, you can fucking tell they're in a back lot, and they're on the smallest set, and they're using a man. Like, and it doesn't feel elevated to that status, but the actors, like, it worked together for me at the end. This is going to be a miss. It's going to be a missed opportunity. You know, you have a nail Leon, because as much as you have Claire and all these shits going on in the game, Leon is a fucking favorite, and you just fucking shit on him through the whole movie. And I guess I, you know, understand it's his rookie and you're going to elevate him. Well, that's the, the plan that you have, the overarching plan that you see, you know. Maybe you have a plan of a trilogy, right? 
fact that maybe wraps up Resident Evil 1 to 4 or 5 and you know, he'll be clean shaven, maybe he'll dye his fucking hair and he'll be way more stoic and, you know, you know, capable. It's just, it's just, you know, like I said, some of the lines, it just draws you out and you've got some half great performances mixed in with flat bullshit and you're trying to you know amp it up by you know like there's one there's one scene where the the music kicks in and it fucking works and it's the big to see all right well they nailed the first scene in the hallway in the mansion where the zombie turns around and looks at them that's right from the video game and the other scene that was it got me and i felt it was the liquors so they're in the orphanage or something and the chief gets sucked up to the ceiling they look up and you see the the liquors are like a you know uh humanoid limb but they crawl like a fucking dog and they could stick to the ceilings and they have these huge tongue that you know slaps you and poisons you, whatever the fuck it does in the game and stuff and then the beat comes in and, it, and i'm like holy shit this is how you do it right the, the music was right on and they lose me like and maybe you can say it's the special effects and stuff but i think you know i'm gonna i'm gonna say that's not it because i can forgive stuff i can forgive silliness watch some uh watch um kill bill and we have sword cutting people around his blood flying around like fountains and you know it can be done right and i think the tone mixture the weakness of the script the cohesiveness that holds us together is not doesn't work it just doesn't work uh, it's sad in a way you know we're trying to see this resurgence of this and i would love to you know because i'll shit on the Mila Jovovich movies too uh they're not masterpieces but they decided to go with a new character and fucking make her an action star and they got some ups and downs in those movies that are fucking you know peaks and pits and valleys like it's all over the place but that dedication sticks through to all the movies, and some of them are bad. But as a whole, it doesn't bother me. I could see this being in three movies, and it bothering the shit out of me. And maybe that's really part of it too. Like you did, you could have had everything. This is what you wanted. You were obviously given let's twenty five million dollars to recreate uh, and make an adaptation of a video game that real true fans were going to be taken with. And I wouldn't say you shit the bed. It wasn't that bad. But you might have tinkled a little and wet yourself. It just doesn't come off right and there's this odor permeating around this movie. And I don't know how to really recommend this movie. Right? So I, I look at this again and go, oh, I have a friend, you know. Uh, harmonica for me is stupid, which is adorable. But how do I go to him and go, oh, oh I heard you were doing Resident Evil. Yeah. What are you doing in the pocket? So I'm putting out the word. Like, do I tell them you got to watch it? No. I think that's what it comes down to, right? I got a friend who, you know, half my age who knows and plays the new Resident Evil games. And can I recommend this as a movie in general? I'm going to say no. Is it the Black Adam where you can, I can recommend it as a popcorn fun movie that has so many flaws and eye rolling moments, but you'll, you'll get through it. And I don't know. And this is a really confusing thing for me with this movie. And I think it's that balance of this yearning to love and bring back, you know, what I loved about Resident Evil that they didn't do with Mila Jovovich's movies. And by the way, there were a couple of good animated movies out there. Maybe I should do a... Have I done a podcast on one? I'm not sure. But there were some animated movies. And that, that they nail. They sort of nail that. And But this is like... This could be the precursor to... A whole line of greatness adaptions. And they're really not nailing it here. So, again, this is Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. An obvious starting point. Like, the, you know, the origins. Uh, you know, some lore going in and setting up what should be a franchise movie. This is not working. Kind of reminds me of the, what is it, The Mummy? Tom Cruise. And, like, they have this vision for this monster cinematic universe and they come out with dracula which i fucking liked 
and it didn't do well, and it bombed, and they did the fucking Frankenstein, which is fucking ridiculous, and like, no, we're gonna do it, and, um, you know, what happens, uh, it just falls apart, and this will be one of those things that, if they do another one, if it's not nailed, this whole thing will just fall apart, there will be no cohesiveness that people are gonna enjoy, and, how much are we looking forward to Wesker coming back as the Wesker we know? Because at the end of this movie, spoiler, there's an end cut it mid credit scene, and fan favorite Ada Wong shows up and is like, oh, waited for you to wake up, and he goes, I thought I died. Yeah, well, obviously, he's, he's, you know, if you know the law, whatever. And he puts his sunglasses on, and whoa! Like, are people who enjoy this movie and enjoy everything. Waiting for him to come back as Wesker? Like, is that a thing? Because to me, he's too big and tall. I don't like his presence on the camera as Wesker. I love him as a fucking officer, just as a raccoon police department. But I didn't buy him as Wesker. Now, Chris Redfield, I kind of bought. Jill, not so much, but I'm going with it because she's a good actress. It seems, you know, she's just going to pull pull it off and the um the sister claire redfield okay um but it's, it's like are we looking for what if the next movie is a chris redfield movie and they they go and take an adaption from a certain game what if they have a movie with leon and they try to do the fourth game i mean whatever maybe i'm getting the numbers wrong it's not going to work and that's the i think that's another problem here and Yes, you can have these TV stars elevate to movies. It's been done. Yes, some of these people have the talent to do it, probably. But what about the people writing it, directing it, filming it, the cinema, this, the graphics, the special effects? It has to work. And I don't think there's this elevation in anything here. But you know what? Bring back Neil McDonald and keep him as a through line throughout the fucking whatever you're doing with this. Just like you did the other guy in the other movies. I think he played, he was on like, he was the guy um, who helped Khaleesi all the time. And they put him in the movies with Mila Jovovich. And he was a through line that came back and was hinted at. Also with Wesker. And he can elevate this. He can continue this and elevate it. And I just don't think the pieces are fit working right now. I think it's a missed opportunity. A mediocre film that I don't have a lot of passion about to shit on. To tell you not to watch it. Is probably where I'm going, but I don't know. There's, there's some things to like in there. There's little bits you can pull out. I don't know. And, and since I have these things up and I jot down my notes, there are things like um, uh, rebooting and a script and the the guys left the project. Like who who is he? Who are these who are these guys like the um, oh, are we going to get James Wan? What a fucking missed opportunity. Hmm. Well, so they did, you know, from the other ones, I think the last movie was Resident Evil, the final chapter, and that's what Miljovich, and let's reboot it, and let's make it more like the game, and I get it, and then I guess people started leaving and stuff, and, you know, and maybe that's why we do love Steven Spielberg, John Carpenter, and, like, they are special, and David Lynch, and, you know, you could shit on Lynch and his bullshit he pulls in his movies, but, you know, I don't know, I have a friend, Steve, and, you know, he has aspirations of this, and besides being a family man and a great father and stuff, these are some of his dreams are like this, and I'd rather have him direct it, like, I don't know, <laughs> Like, is, is it that? And I think that's where I'll end this in the sense where this is a director mistake with the, not the right budget. He couldn't elevate it. He had some great pieces here, some great visions. Like, there were some, like I said, moments where the camera's identical to the game. The music picks up and you're, you're right in it. And it loses you. And then you got fucking helicopters breaking into buildings and oh it looks great but there's people right fucking there and when you cut away and come back they get up brush themselves off you okay fuck that and then you 
dare shoot a rocket launcher, and I don't mean a special handheld, newfangled rocket launcher. We're talking fucking on the shoulder, taking tanks out, rocket launcher. And you shoot it in a train car. Yes, a train car. I don't care how big the train car you can imagine. Imagine the biggest train car you've ever been on because it's umbrella, right? Fine. Give it give it extra space. You hit a creature the size of a fucking like 20 feet tall creature bent over, hunched in, rips open the top of the thing, going to eat everybody and kill everybody. And you shoot a rocket launcher right at the creature and Chris Redfield's fucking less than a foot away and he's like oh no and people cover their heads and stuff no i'm sorry you do this and you make the movie end with credits coming up that says the valiant courageous people who stopped this thing and they're all dead just show them all fucking burned missing limbs and fucking and have one of them survive like ah, you know <laughs> shrapnel and they'll be the scarred anti-hero hero for the rest of the movies because now you can see I'm getting patched, because that pissed me off. It's worse than the helicopter crashing into the police station. That you can get, you can, you can wave, hand wave that away, right? Oh, because she, she sees it coming. Um, Jill sees it coming, and then screams to Wesker, and they fucking go to run out, and it's slow motion, and it hits. And then, but that big fireball that fucking should have fucking just burned everybody. Anyway, I'll forgive that. I'm going to forgive it. You don't shoot a rocket launcher in a train car. I don't care if the top's ripped open. And play any game with any camera angle where people do the dive away special fucking maneuver that makes you invulnerable to shit. No, come on, stop it. Do the fucking thing where the idiot pulls the pin on the train car, right? And the train car gets unhooked. And the creature's like, ah! And then they shoot a rocket launcher like 50 feet away. And boom! See? Pay me the fucking money. Because that's what I would have fucking done. Yes, I would have used the trope where the fucking main thing of the whole battle is give this guy time. Make it Leon. Make it fucking Leon. Gotta give Leon enough time to get to that pin. You know how the train cars are connected in the old western days. You know what? Do it. Put the fucking western track in. Get the pin and the whole struggle is the pin and liquors. Make it whatever you want to fucking do. But you shot a rocket launcher in a train car. The guy was a foot away from the creature. There's a kid and a fucking woman there. Uh, fucking Claire, Red Joe, whatever the fuck it is. And they all survive. Fuck off. And that's really near the end of the movie because there's real no villain is after you through the movie. It's a hodgepodge of um, muted and downplayed things to bring out this break uh, outbreak, let's call it, and you're finding out the hints, and you, you, you the, 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 the story you got to put together is doctors, orphanage, experiments, kids, whatever, and that's like put together. And it, maybe you could say it's like the, the video game, but anyway. Resident Evil, welcome to Raccoon City, a missed opportunity, kind of, you know, uh, good and bad, and it's a mix of indifference is not a lot of passion either way although i guess you know i'm, I'm kind of a hypocrite because i'm getting passionate about that fucking ending because the more i think about the rocket launcher i get i get like that's a decision you don't make and someone's got to come onto the fucking set and go guys this guy on the internet this fucking schmuck says have a train car and make the pulse pounding suspense can they pull the pin in time because they can't and have someone say hey asshole you can't shoot that in here well, what am I going to do? Get the pin. Unlock the pin. Okay, whatever. I think I'm done, right? You get the idea? I can't recommend this. But maybe to fans of the game, yes. You're going to see things you like. You're going you're gonna to smile here and there. Okay, I'll admit it. You know, and you're going to get that moment or two that will make you believe the game is brought to life. Because one of the things about the original game, which they... I think they fucked up later, but people love it. Is in the original game, you're playing this game, and what they did was they filmed real footage, like a movie, and intersect, intercut it into the game. 
So at the time, you're playing this PlayStation on this CD, and you're like, what the fuck? And it's in, you know, you see the three animations and pixels, and then they cut to, like, people running from the helicopter, and it's a real person. They're real. And then in the later rendition, when they brought it back, they cut, they used all those cuttings and made it all graphics, computer, gaming. And I thought that was a mistake. So you have that opportunity here, and it works here and there. You're going to get, you know, you're going to get a little bit of the feels, but... I guess that's all I got to say. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope you had a great Halloween. Lots of candy. Be careful, you know, diabetes and all that shit. Love you all. Take care.